I think it would actually be an understatement to say that the metaverse is a hot topic today. Uh, in fact, uh, it, it, it is it is probably one of the only things that's being talked about uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, when I meet a lot of people. Um, the only problem is this. Everyone uh, in this uh, metaverse industry um, you know, either claims to be involved in it or claims to be an expert uh, about, about the metaverse. Uh, and in all honesty, uh, in all of the um, talks that I've attended uh, where people were trying to explain uh, what they thought the metaverse was, um, it, it only got more and more confusing as I tried to understand more and more about it uh, and as I try and drill more and more questions about the metaverse. Uh, and actually, there's, uh, there's, there's a good reason uh, why there, there is all this confusion. Number one, uh, the definition of metaverse actually is different for, for different people. Um, you know, everyone has, a, has, has their own views. Uh, in fact, uh, in most cases, uh, you know, uh, they are even confused about what they really think about what the metaverse is, right? And, 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 the, and, and in order for us to actually be able to have a very clear concept of what the metaverse really is or how we define the metaverse for ourselves, uh, there are actually three very basic concepts uh, that we all need to understand, uh, that we need to wrap our heads around before we can actually have a better understanding as to what we're talking about when we talk about metaverse. Okay, now the three concepts are these. Uh, the first one is the real world versus the virtual world. Right on the surface, it sounds very simple, right? The real world is basically the world that we are all uh, living in, where we live, breathe, eat, sleep. Uh, that's the world that we're living in, and that's the that's the real world. Now, the virtual world um, is a little bit more complex because um, you know, in 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 my view, is any digital environment. Uh, where we can get involved in is essentially a virtual world, right? So, um, you know, as, as far back as 20, 30 years ago, uh, when you play Pac-Man, for example, in the arcade, uh, the environment, the Pac-Man environment that you are playing in, that in itself is a virtual world. And then that grew into, for example, um, the world of Warcraft. Um, that's again, another virtual world that you go into uh, to play games and to fight uh, monsters. And then in today's world, uh, when my son creates games on Roblox, the Roblox uh, environment is a virtual world. Uh, and then to go a step further, if you look at the central land, for example, where people are paying crazy money to buy virtual land, that is also the virtual world, right? So, so let's be very clear about this very first concept. And let's not get confused about uh, AR or augmented re reality because AR is just really a hybrid environment where you have both the real world elements and the virtual world elements combined together in one environment. So that's fine, okay? So, but that's not a different category. Uh, we know that there's the real world and the virtual world. So, so first of all, let's, let's make sure we get that part clear. Now, the, the, the main issue we have uh, actually with respect to the virtual world is that most people think that uh, there are no real world consequences when you are in the virtual world. Now, that's not true, right? Um, in, 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 in all honesty, when you are actually in the virtual world, you still have to breathe, you still have to live in the real world. So you, you, can't, you can't say that you have no consequences uh, when you're doing whatever you're doing in the virtual world uh, because you're not in the real world. I think that's something that uh, we've got to be very careful about. Uh, the reason why I raise this will actually become apparent slightly later uh, when I start talking about the second and the third concepts, right? But let's actually bear that in mind. Um, uh, it, it, and I'm, I'm bringing this up because there are a lot of people that seem to suggest that as long as I'm in the virtual world, I'm safe from everything else in the real world. So that's not the case. Now, the second concept that we are actually, we need to wrap our heads around is actually the concept of tangible and intangible assets. Again, very simple. It only gets confusing when people mix it all up, okay? But tangible assets are basically uh, assets that are physically, that has a physical presence, right? So things that you can touch and feel um, are, are actually uh, tangible assets. So that's easy to explain. Now, what are intangible assets? Now, so everything that you find in the virtual world is obviously intangible because you could not bring a tangible asset into your intangible, into your virtual world. So everything in there must be intangible in nature. However, the danger is everyone assumes that everything intangible must only occur in the virtual world. Now, that is actually not true uh, because uh, you can have 
uh, intangible assets in the real world as well, right? And what would and what would these uh, assets actually be? Just give me a second. Now, so the intangible assets in the real world are essentially uh, your intellectual property, your contractual rights, right? Your souls and actions, your debt. That's actually an intangible asset. Okay. Uh, the problem is that a lot of people in the crypto world seems to think that you only find intangible assets in the virtual world, uh, and that there are none in the real world. But that's actually not true at all. Uh, and and I explained why uh, again why I mentioned earlier about how people get so uh, disillusioned by the fact that they think that they can ignore everything else in the real world as long as they're in the virtual world is precisely this point, right? For example, I'm not sure whether some of you may have seen a recent um, news about how uh, Hermes is actually make, suing uh, a, a virtual uh, world uh, creator that was creating bags that would look too much like a, an Hermes bag, right? So there are real world consequences regardless of what you do in the virtual world. And I think that's something that a lot of people are missing. Uh, in fact, we've had some really amazing conversations with you know, even crypto investors, uh, crypto funds, and some crypto companies, and they tell us, oh, we don't care about what happens in the real world. We don't care about legal. We don't care about regulations because in the virtual you. world, you know, we have, we have, uh, we have uh, smart contracts and therefore, you know, we, we don't need any laws. But that's not true, okay? The law, the long arm of the law will come in and grab you the moment you actually breach anything, regardless of whether you're in the virtual or in the real world. I think that's the second concept that we need to be very careful about uh, when we talk about the metaverse. Now, the third one is Web 2.0 and Web 3.0, okay? Now, Web 2.0 is essentially uh, the internet that we, we experience today is basically the centralized system uh, for all of the for all of the internet activities, right? And Web 3.0 is very simple. It's just what we're calling the blockchain today, right? So everything is on a blockchain. Uh, it's going to be made public. Uh, it's, it's, it's immutable because there are so many nodes that control a consensus mechanism so that any change that you want to make on the blockchain needs to be agreed by all of the relevant nodes. And that's Web 3.0. Okay. Now, once you have all of these three concepts very clear in your head, you are now able to then determine what exactly do you mean when you talk about metaverse. Okay. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, everyone has a different uh, definition of metaverse. Our company has a different definition. But it seems that to most people, the virtual world is already the metaverse. Okay, but in reality, that, that is not necessarily the case uh, in, in my view, but that's fine. Some people think that the virtual is effectively the metaverse, but then they get confused because they mix up, mix it up with Web 3.0. They mix it up with intangible assets, and then they get confused about what exactly are they referring to. Okay, so let me explain, for example, um, Roblox. Okay, it's obviously uh, everything you find in Roblox, obviously intangible because it's actually a virtual environment. Number two, uh, however, uh, it is uh, in the virtual world, so it, everyone can refer to them as the metaverse, but guess what? They are Web 2.0, so they're not Web 3.0, okay? So, so it's not necessarily the case that metaverse must be Web 3.0 or Web 2.0, or it must be virtual or intangible or whatever, right? The whole point is you've got to decide what is metaverse to you, okay? But you need to make sure you go through, go through all three concepts before you make that decision. The other example is Decentraland, right? So Decentraland comes out and they profess to be full Web 3.0. Okay, so, so they claim that they are the true metaverse because they are Web 3.0, they are intangible, and they are also um, in the virtual world. Okay, but it, look, if you, if you study Web 3.0 very carefully, because of all the inconvenience uh, in relation to having so many nodes controlling information, the user experience is very, very poor. So I, I obviously haven't done the study myself, but I, sus I have suspect part of the Decentraland uh, uh, environment is Web 2.0 and another part of it is, is Web 3.0. It's very, very difficult to have a full Web 3.0 environment um, because you know people are, aren't going to be able to experience or have a good user experience because currently we don't, we don't have the, the bandwidth uh, and we don't have enough um, 
solutions uh, to deal with information flow in order to get a good user experience. So, so that that's the that's the main thing that I'm trying to uh, identify for everyone here, right? So the next time you have a have a when you attend a seminar, you hear someone talk about the metaverse, ask them to clarify what exactly are they talking about and which aspect. Uh, are they actually referring to, right? And that would clarify exactly what they mean by metaverse. Now, as a as a group, our definition of metaverse is actually the multiverse, right? So we don't think of metaverse as, oh, it's only the virtual environment or it's only the Web 3.0 environment. Okay, we think of uh, metaverse as a multiverse because what we are trying to do is I'm trying to pull all of those six different elements into one. Okay, so if I have a chance later to talk about our company,